G'day, Charlie. Um, mate, I'm, I'm G'day, not mate. from around. G'day. Uh, I'm clearly not from around here, mate. So, um, but uh, you're from a lockdown country. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> I'm from the most lockdown city in the world, actually. And um, so, what I've found uh, travelling across, across this country is that there's a lot of Americans who are seduced by the ideas uh, that are perpetuated in Australia. A lot of like especially young Americans. Um, for any of you ha who haven't seen like what's happening in my country, it's pretty insane. Um, and I think that there's a massive equation between Western nations that we're all the same, especially with young people. And they, and they look or they're sold this concept that, you know, you look to Europe for the future, look to Australia for the future. So I just wanted to know, what would you say to young Americans about American exceptionalism and where you don't want to head in terms of uh, the future for America? It's a phenomenal question. Let me ask you a question first. Tell us how bad it actually is in Australia. Like, just tell us some examples of what's happening in your country. So I'll try not to go on a lot because, um, so like, I mean, I have a lot of mates who are really struggling right now. My mum's fled Victoria and uh, my sister, they've, they've left to go to Queensland. Victoria is basically where Melbourne is. It's the second largest city in Australia. And um, so it's basically the California of Australia. And uh, only, only like seriously worse um, because it's got really violent in terms of police uh, cracking down on protests and stuff like that. We don't have any freedom of speech in Australia enshrined in legislation. So yeah, so it's, um, it's so, so my mum's really struggled uh, in terms of mentally and stuff like that, because it's just, um, yeah, like and, and lockdowns. There, and just to add more color to that, mandatory curfews, can't go outside a couple miles outside of your home. Those are all real things, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All because of... Like, very real. It's yeah. not, yeah. Because what, what you're hearing out of Australia is very, very real. I, I'm told by people this is not true, and... Oh, nah. You got the accent to prove nah, people, it. No, so. people being arrested... <laughs> people being arrested for putting their trash cans out after curfew. Like, you can get onto YouTube and you'll have a ball on there. You'll just spend hours watching crazy stuff from Australia. So, America's, not snakes. America's supposed to be different. And this is where I talk about American exceptionalism. The Anglosphere has differences, unfortunately. That Australia does not believe in natural rights the way the American project did. You just gave a great example. They do not have freedom of speech protected. Therefore, in Australia, the guys with the guns get to determine who gets to talk. In America, as we have an assault on freedom of speech, public expression, freedom of assembly, all of a sudden, we're going to start heading in that direction. So what is the big difference between Australia and America? It comes down to our mission statement. It comes down to the mission statement of America is who's the sovereign? The people. Australia, they do not believe that. What, what else is the difference in America? We believe the states created the federal government. The federal government did not create the states. Australia is a centralized nation. We're one size fits all. We're going to tell you what to do. Mandatory edict. You do not question it. In America, we have liberty as a core value. We have a trinity in our country. In our country, there's a Christian trinity. Jesus the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. There's an American trinity. It's on every coin. You guys should look at it every time you look at a piece of currency before they all go away, which is going to happen very soon, unfortunately. Liberty, in God we trust, and e pluribus unum. It's the American trinity. Australia believes in none of those things. I'm not accusing Australia. This is not part of their mission statement. Liberty, which means doing what you ought to do absent government or corporate interference. In God we trust, a transcendent order of a natural rights giver. E pluribus unum, Latin phrase, it means out of many one. We are one people, and the ruling class is not better than the sovereign. And what is the ramifications of that? Australia, because they were not founded on the same ideas, you know, that kind of history class that you might not take that seriously, the history that's under attack by the critical race theorists, because Australia does not have the same documents, the same mission statement, the same preservation of rights. Yeah, when they get 200 COVID cases, they can march through the streets and start to arrest eight-year-olds because they're outside of curfew. And that's not an exaggeration. It's a real thing. So when I say an American exceptionalism, that means a recommitment to the American ideas that allow us even to be here tonight. If we had a gathering like this here in Australia, we would all be arrested for a very, very long time. Am I exaggerating with that? It's a very real Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. I was thinking that earlier. I was like, oh man, if this happened in Melbourne right now, it would be shut down hardcore. We have something special here in this country, everybody. Let's make sure we don't lose it. God bless you. Thank you for being here. This is Charlie Kirk. 
founder and CEO of Turning Point USA. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Turning Point USA.